prepare a short sermon for the liturgy, so I thank everyone, and I do miss the church very much, and I miss you all. Um, the gospel for today is actually one of, one of the most beautiful gospels. Of course, all the gospels are beautiful, but this one is close to my heart. And there's something that's in, intrinsically very appealing about staying at the feet of Christ. And today we're going to look at the woman. Obviously, we've all heard the story multiple times. Today we'll focus on the woman, and we will ask three questions. Where, what, and who? The first is where. Where was she going? And the answer is Simon's house. If we think about this for a second, she's not welcome there. She went to Simon's house knowing fully well when she was walking the street, when she's on their way, she's not welcome there. He's going to judge her. He might say something that offends her. He's going to look down at her. She knew that fully well, but she went there because her focus was not Simon, was not his comments, was not who else is there. It was Christ. Um, and this is something that's very important. Sometimes we might get discouraged, you know, something at church we dislike or uncomfortable at here or there. Never deprive ourselves from going to church. We're not going there for a servant or a priest or a bishop or the deacons or anybody. We're going there for Christ and to sit at the feet of Christ. And that's always a good reminder for us. For that woman, she wasn't even welcome there. Obviously, all of us are always welcomed in the church. Um, I go to a lot of churches, obviously, and I moved a lot in the past few years. Uh, so I'm not talking about this church per se, but I've been to a lot of churches where that's people deprive themselves from the holiness of the altar because of a personal or an ideological thing that they have. And that's it just, why would we do that to ourselves? So the, the woman here shows us a very clear example of how she kind of overcame all that. She's going there for Christ and Christ alone. Now that's the where, but there is obviously a more important where, which is where she ended up, the feet of Christ. That's all she wanted to be, and that's where um, she wanted to spend that evening. And it's important to think, I'd like to contrast this. One time the disciples actually came to Jesus, and in another story their mother came, uh, James and, and, and John, and she told them, can we put one on the right hand and one on the left? And you look at what this woman said, uh, when, what this woman did, it kind of opens her eyes that, you know, what right hand and left hand mean this is like God Almighty. If we can stay at his feet for a few minutes, this is beautiful. It's beautiful if we can do that. Now, that's where she ended up. She got to the feet of Christ. Now, what did she do? She cried. She cried very valuable tears. Um, Father Matthew the Purashi in Orthodox Prayer Life tells us, our tears not a sign of the limitation of speech, or in the bewilderment the tongue fails, the heart speaks, and the eyes utter tears. But who can interpret this language? It is the totality of sentiments dissolved in a single drop. And it's important to understand where she's coming from. She spent a life before in tears, and she's coming now, and she's offering her tears. There's no words that can describe the emotions that she's going through. So her heart is, is obviously very emotional, and her tears start falling through. And this is what the quote is saying, that when, when all words kind of stop, that's when tears kind of start, and that's when the heart speaks. And the beginning of the journey of God in any repentance usually begins with tears. St. Isaac the Syrian tells us, weeping by itself is a partition that separates the soul from the maladies of sin. Weeping by itself is a partition that, that separates the soul from the maladies of sin. That's St. Isaac the Syrian. So the, the beginning of the road with Christ, well, we usually begin with tears, where we feel the weight of our sin is so much for us that we just fall down at his feet and we start crying. Lord, come back. We miss you. Or actually, it's us that we should go back. Lord, help me go back. We miss you. But the tears don't really stop there. Um, there's a quote that says, so long as a man progresses in his spiritual life, his lot of tears increases. They are constant. He drinks them in his cup and in his food. It's also Father Matthew the poor. And obviously, it's not tears of sadness or no. It's tears of emotion. We feel God's presence so much that the words can even describe what we're feeling and the tears start flowing. And obviously, it starts with tears of repentance, as the previous quote said. That's the journey. But as we progress, and obviously there's going to be different times where, where emotions might fluctuate and we might get some dry times. And obviously different people pray differently. I don't want anybody to feel guilty uh, if they're not crying. Different people pray differently. But here I think it's more about the emotion and the sentiment. We're in the presence of God where the emotions are so high that there's something that happens in, 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 in our psyche, in our, in our soul, not just we're going through the motions. And so that's what she did. She cried. So where did she go? She went to Simon's house, went to his feet, went to Christ's feet, and she cried. The last question I would like to ask is who? Who is she? And the answer, 
At that point in time in the world, she is the happiest and most comforted person in the entire universe. She's sitting at the feet of Christ, washing them with her tears and, and breaking the alabaster box. And in here, actually, this gospel, the church put it every day in the midnight prayer, second watch. Um, and the litanies for that is, is actually really beautiful. It says, Give me, O Lord, many fountains of tears as you gave in the past the sinful woman. Why? Why many fountains of tears? So we can be cried and miserable and sad. And... No, 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 no. And gain through repentance a pure life so that I may hear the voice full of joy saying your faith has saved you. There is joy in the presence of God, even when the tears are coming. You might be surprised. You're saying this woman is the happiest and most comforted person. This woman that's like crying her heart out. Yeah, that's the most comforted person at that time. A lot of times, obviously, I serve in the high school uh, class, and a lot of times we kind of get this question, whether it's, you know, direct or indirect, but, you know, we're young. Let's live our life. Let's have fun. When we grow up, when we settle down, when we have a marriage, we'll settle down by and we can start our spirituality, but now it's, it's fine. God will accept us if we go back. And even if we don't, even if uh, some of the, if we don't say that out loud, it's a thought that comes to our mind. But here, when we listen to the Pauline epistle, it says what? Blessed is the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulations, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble. And in here, it's very clear that from God comes comfort. When I was younger, I heard this story, actually, which was beautiful. It's about a man who went, uh, I think it was from London to America. And he bought a first-class ticket. That was, the only, that was the only ticket available on that. It was a boat, obviously. It was a ferry, or a boat, uh, a ship. And the only one that was available was a first-class ticket. So he bought the first-class ticket. It was all the money he had, so he doesn't have any money for food or anything on the ship. So he, he bought with whatever is left a big bag of crackers, and he took it with him on the ship. So as he's sitting on the ship, it's multiple days, obviously. He's watching the people eat the good food, and it's first-class. So all the meats and cheeses and desserts and everything. And he's sitting there with a bag of crackers day after day because that's all he can afford. On the last day, someone saw him and he's like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm eating. He's like, why? There's so much food here. He's like, yeah, but I don't have any money. I spent it all on the ticket. So it's okay. When I get there, I'll work and I'll make money. He's like, you spent it all on the ticket. Show me your ticket. And when he showed him his ticket, it said right there on the bottom, all meals are included. That was the last day, the last day, the last meal. Can you imagine what he felt? All meals are included. Christ from Christ comes all the comfort. Yeah, sure, we can. We can spend our life however we want, and we can't spend it far from Christ. And when we go back, I'm sure he'll accept us. But obviously, the, the biggest flaw, beside the fact that we don't know if we're going to even live that long, we, no one knows if he's going to wake up tomorrow. No one is certain. Is why would we deprive ourselves from that? That woman that was at Christ's feet, I am almost 100% positive. If she can go back and change every second she lived without Christ, she would go back and do it. No doubt in my mind. If she can go back and make that moment that she's at the feet of Christ crying, if she can make that the rest of her past, no doubt in my mind she would do it. So why would we deprive ourselves from that? Christ is opening his, his arms and saying, the Father and God of all comfort, why would we deprive ourselves for years and then go back? I'm sure he'd, he'd accept us, sure. But why? We're the ones losing. We can be with him every second of every day. And God is not against fun. God is not against fun. He's against sin, as we read in the Catholic epistle today. That quote was from the poem, the, the God of all comfort. As we read in the Catholic epistle today, whoever sins is not from God. So God is not against fun. He's against sin. Have fun. Enjoy life. Sure. But do it with God. Do it at his feet. Never leave it. It's interesting. If you look at the saints, some of them left everything and went to the wilderness. Why? Just to be lonely and miserable? No, 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 no. They saw something in Christ that was some joy and comfort that was above everything else in the world, and they were willing to leave everything for that. The apostles left everything and followed him. Why? So they can be poor and lonely and, and jobless and homeless? No. They saw something in following Christ that was above everything else, and they followed him. The martyrs. We just celebrated Nairuz, actually, not too long ago, a few weeks ago. The martyrs, they left everything, including their own head even. They lost it. For Christ. And if we stop and think about the martyrs, it's very interesting. They didn't think about, oh yeah, I'll leave Christ for a few years. It wasn't even a few seconds. If you think about it, when the king is asking him to deny Christ, they can deny him now and rebuke him 
and then when they go home, they can repent. You know, they're just being non-Christians for five minutes, yani. it's not a big deal. But is that what they did? No, absolutely not, not even a second. If you think about the position of the mortars, they literally could have been non-Christians for five minutes, go back and repent, and we know God, sure, whatever. But they didn't do that. They would rather lose their own head than lose one second away from Christ. That's what they're saying. I would rather lose my own head than lose one second away from Christ. Why? Is it just because they're crazy? or No, it's because they know every second with Christ is worth living. And without Christ, it's not even worth living. I'd rather lose my life and head than lose one second of Christ. Of course, that's such a high level. I hope, I hope one day uh, all of us, including myself, can reach that. But it shows the depth that that woman, at that second, that is the happiest person in life because she's in the presence of God, sitting at Christ's feet. Um, I would like to end on this quote, actually. It's also by St. Isaac the Syrian. It says, Before anything else, we need always to keep God before our eyes and in our minds, that we will surely then grant, then he will surely then grant us the gift of tears. St. Isaac the Syrian. It says, Before anything else, we need to always keep God before our minds and hearts. And if you think about what the woman did, that's exactly it. From the minute she left her house, going to Simon's house, she knew Simon's house was not a good not a good place for her. She's not welcomed, but she's focused on Christ. From the minute she sat down and, and started weeping at his feet, she's focused on Christ. For the rest of her life after that, she will probably focus on Christ. So to recap, we asked three questions. Where? She went to Simon's house. She didn't deprive herself. She was focused on Christ and Christ alone. Never deprive yourself from the altar and from Christ because of anything else. And she sat at Christ's feet. What did she do? She cried the valuable tears of change, of repentance, and later on, of the fullness of the emotions and the spirituality of prayers. And who was she? She was the happiest person in the universe at that time because from that time she started living in the shadow and presence of Christ. May God grant us many tears like the, the woman, many fountains of tears like the sinful woman. And may he tell us one day, go in peace. Your faith has saved you. To God be all the glory forever and ever and unto the age of all ages. Amen. Now I realize that I should have introduced Ben before he started his, uh, his word. Thank you, Ben, for the words. It's very comforting and very um, touching. Ben used to serve with us here a few years ago, and now he lives in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, he's, uh, he used to serve in high school, and he's just back for the weekend to visit. We hope to see you more often, and uh, thank you for the words. Um, hopefully today we, um, we reflect on what we heard. We, we don't take it like any other sermon and pass it by and remember this lady came, just wanted to be at the feet of Christ. Today we are here before him and we just be at the feet and just looking for anything of his blessings and just, just be there. I don't want even no blessing, I don't want anything, I just want to be there. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, guys.